Let's talk about subtools. So I'm going to begin by creating a dynamic sphere and that's going to give us access to this subtool menu right here. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that and I'm going to talk a little bit about what subtools are. So subtools at first appear to be some kind of layer management system and they can be treated that way but that's not their primary function. Subtools essentially help you work around your computer's polygon limit. And what I mean by that is you can separate your mesh off into separate subtools as you approach your computer's polygon limit. However, the law of diminishing returns apply here as well. And so as you keep creating more and more subtools, there is going to be an overhead to pay. So what I mean by all this is, let's say your computer has a polygon limit of 3 million polygons. Once you hit that limit, you can basically split your mesh off into another subtool and continue to sculpt till you hit that limit again with that new subtool. And you can do this a few times before you start to run into some performance issues. So that's basically what subtools allow you to do. Again, with some overheads to pay as you create more and more subtools. So now I'm just going to go through some of the different options that you can find under subtools and I'm going to sort of walk you through the different options available here. So the first thing we see is visible count and what visible count is it lets you see a certain number of slots at once in this palette here. So if I increase this it increases the number of slots in this palette and the if I bring down the value it does the opposite. Now under that you can see this polysphere subtool here and that is our current subtool and is selected right now and that's what we see here in the viewport. If we come off to the side here we can see this eye icon and that basically allows us to toggle visibility on and off. So the next thing is let's look at how we can add more subtools here. So if I come over here to append subtool and I click on one of these subtools here so let's just create a ring. So now it's not visible because the ring I think is scaled down so I'm just going to scale that up. Uh, just make sure that I'm on the ring here and then scale it up. So now we can see that ring. So this is how you add in a subtool. So insert uh, pretty much does the same thing and if you want to know the difference just hover over this and hold down control and you're going to get a little pop-up menu there where it's going to explain what append does and what insert does. So both of them essentially bring in a subtool into your scene. So now we can see we have two subtools that are visible here. Now if I toggle the eye off, now that turns our subtool off there. And if I toggle this off, we can still see the ring here, even though I've toggled it off. And the reason for that is because we are currently selected. I mean, we've currently selected this mesh and therefore we can still see it. The moment we jump to a different subtool, it vanishes. And we can toggle that back on again using the eye icon here. So pretty simple. The next thing I want to talk about is how we can name these subtools. So if you come down here to rename subtool, with right now we have polysphere selected. So I'm just going to hit rename and that's going to give us this option here to name our subtool. So I'm just going to name it sphere and to accept you have to hit enter and as you can see the name has now changed there and I'm going to select the next one and repeat the same process just to demonstrate and that's what it does. So that's how you rename subtools. So the next thing I'm going to talk a little bit about is duplicate. So if we come all the way down here you can see this duplicate button and what this does is it just duplicates your object here into a separate subtool. So if I hit duplicate you can now see since we have this ring selected it's duplicated that as a new subtool. And delete pretty much does what it says which is to delete the currently active subtool. So since this second, this duplicate ring is what we have selected as our active subtool, hitting delete, it's going to say that this is an undoable operation. And so it's just giving us a warning there and we're going to say OK and it goes ahead and deletes that subtool. The next thing I want to talk about is creating folders. So if you've used Photoshop in the past, Photoshop has this 
function called groups where you can create groups and organize layers in different groups and folders pretty much do the same thing. So I'm just going to come over here and say new folder and it's again going to ask us to name it. So I'm just going to name it folder and leave it as so. And if you scroll up here, since this was our active subtool, it's gone ahead and put this subtool into this folder here. So now I'm just going to show you the different things you can do with folders. So you can drag subtools from one folder into another. And it also indicates the number of subtools we have in here. So right now it says two subtools within this folder. And we can add more groups. I mean, we can add more folders into this. So I'm just going to, with the ring selected, that's our active subtool right now. I'm just going to say folder two. And now what it's gone and done is it's basically created a separate folder for this ring. And now we can switch things over. And since the folder above had only one subtool, since I brought it into the folder number two, that folder automatically got deleted. Now, there are a few icons here and I'm just gonna explain what these do. So the gear icon here basically enables us to perform certain actions. And I'm not going to go ahead and explain any of that because it's pretty self-explanatory. You can explore this by yourself. And then it has the eye icon here again, which is to simply toggle the visibility on and off. And again, it's going to keep the subtool that we have selected here visible. So that's something you need to just keep in mind. So I'm just going to create a few more subtools here just to illustrate some of the features. So now if you come down here, you can see these arrows. So what this arrow does is it just cycles through your different subtools. So if we click on this, it basically cycles up and this cycles below. And this basically moves subtools up and down. So this basically has, I've now rearranged the subtools and you can basically select any subtool there and just push that to the bottom and so on. And you can also just drag and drop. That's an easier, I find that a lot easier to do. So after that, let's uh, talk a little bit about how you can go about splitting subtools. So let's say, let me just hide these two and just leave, leave the sphere on. So I'm just going to bring in an insert mesh brush and I'm just going to insert, say, a sphere. So once we do that, we can now split these off into different parts. So how we can do that is by heading down here to the split menu here. And what this allows us to do is to split these by parts by similar parts, parts, unmasked points, and mass points. So I'm just going to go ahead and say split to similar parts. And what that's going to do is it's going to take these two similar subtools and it's then going to club them together as a separate new subtool. So I'm just going to hit that and it's going to give us a warning here because it's an undoable operation. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay. So now it has clubbed those two together into one subtool. So I'm just going to hide that sphere that we had. And I'm now I'm going to say split to parts. If I say split to parts and accept, it has now split these two into two separate subtools. So if you want to quickly access subtools, instead of coming over here to the subtool menu, a quick way of doing this is by holding down Alt and clicking on the subtool you want to work on. So now it's switched to this subtool and I can, let's say, work on this. And if I want to quickly switch to the next subtool, what I can do is just click on that and work on that. And that's a way we can quickly access subtools rather than coming here to the subtool menu and manually sort of um, going through all the options here and selecting a subtool. Another way you can also bring up your subtools is by hitting the letter N on your keyboard and that quickly brings up the subtools that we have here on the screen. So those are just a few hard keys while working with subtools. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is splitting by masked and unmasked points. So I'm just going to create a mask by holding down control and selecting a part of the mesh. And then I'm going to hit split by either unmasked or masked points. I'm just going to hit unmasked points. And what that has now gone and done is it has split one part into a separate subtool. So if we come over here to the subtool menu, we can now see that it's basically sliced this in half along the selection I made and created it as a separate subtool. So now if I switch that off, you can see that, you know, the faces behind are not visible. And if you want to see the faces, you need to turn double shading on. And so you can find that in the display properties. Just come and click on double sided. So when you do that, you can now see the faces at the back as well. Let's now look at merging subtools. So I'm just going to collapse the split menu and I'm going to expand merge. And right now, some of the options here are grayed out. And if I just move up here, you can start to see that some of them come back. And the reason that was grayed out there is because this was the last subtool, and since we were on that, there's nothing to merge down on. So anyway, if I go up one subtool, it's not going to appear there. And what merge down does is it basically takes the subtool above and just merges it onto the one below. So if I do that, it's going to give us a warning since it's an undoable operation again. And I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And it's now basically merged that into one subtool. Then there is also the merge similar option and you can go ahead and play with all these options i'm just going to show you the merge visible so i'm just going to go ahead and say merge visible and if i do that it's going to right now in the subtool palette we can't see it but if we come up here we can see that it's actually merged as a new tool so it's merged everything that we could see there as a new tool. And so it, this can be a little bit confusing. So now I'm just going to hop back over to the, what we had before. So that's what Merge Visible does. Now the other option I'm going to talk about and the final one that I'm going to talk about in this subtool section is Extract. So I've gone ahead and created a new Dynamesh Sphere to demonstrate the Extract function. So I'm going to begin by just painting on a mask and I'm going to hit extract. So what this has gone and done is it's basically extruded the region based on the mask that we painted there. And if I move off to the side, you can see now that extraction that we did there disappears. And the reason for that is because we never hit accept. So if we hit accept, what's going to happen is it's going to create an extraction and it's going to basically create that as a new subtool. Now I'm going to talk about some of the options that we have here. So I'll just talk about what is most used. So one of the most used ones are thickness. So that's pretty self-explanatory. If I bump up the thickness, it's going to create a really thick extraction. If I just bring the value down like so, it's going to create a very thin extraction. The other thing I want to talk about is double-sided. So what double-sided does is, if, let's just activate double sided. So now if I extract with double sided on, it's basically going to create an extraction on both sides of the mask. So on this end, it's going to project out this way as well as inside the mesh. So let me just demonstrate that. So I've just gone ahead and extracted and now I'm going to hit accept and that's going to create a new subtool. I'm going to clear the mask and I'm going to hide the sphere. So as you can see, it basically created a subtool on both ends. I mean, it's created an extraction on both ends based on the mask that we painted. And let's try without this on. I'm going to hit extract here and say accept. And now if we toggle that on, we can see that it's basically created a... Let's just bring that back there. Yep. So we can see that it's basically created a extraction that is flush to the surface and with the other one, it's gone ahead and created a extraction on either side of the mask that we painted on there. So that's pretty much it on extraction. 
All right, so before we move on to the next section, I just wanted to go over something that I missed out while covering subtools. So you can see that we have this option here called all low and all high. So if we hit this option all low, what it's gonna do is it's gonna basically take all our subtools that we have here and it's going to bring that down to its lower subdivision. So if we go to geometry here, we can see that this subtool has four subdivision levels and this one has four subdivision levels as well. So I'm just gonna hop back here and hit all low and you can instantly see that it's brought it all down to the lowest subdivision. And the same thing can be said for all high, basically pushes everything up to the highest subdivision level. And so uh, the only other thing I missed out was this copy and paste option. So you can pretty much just copy your subtool and then hit paste and it's gonna paste it as a new subtool. But you can get the same result by just hitting duplicate as well. So that's pretty much it on this subtool section. I'll see you in the next one.